steadied us for better days and built a vision that we executed together to remind this nation what it looks like when Democrats govern. It's fitting that we come together in March as we mark Women's History Month because there is no one in this country who has done more for women and children than Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The children, the children, the children. How many times have I heard that in my first two years in Congress? And now, as we see the promise of working with President Biden's administration, let me say it one more time, President Biden. There's no one more prepared to help usher through our agenda than the woman who has built a reputation as an unrivaled negotiator and legislative tactician the woman responsible for guiding the passage of landmark bills like the Affordable Care Act, the American Recovery Act, and soon the American Rescue Plan. At a time when Republicans across this country are plotting to undermine the right to vote, she's ensuring that House Democrats protect Americans' voices at the ballot box. Since the day she arrived in Congress, Speaker Pelosi has been a tireless champion of equality. And on a personal note, my wife Cheryl and I and our four sons are grateful. Colleagues, it is my great honor to welcome the most accomplished and effective legislator of our lifetimes, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you so much. I'm so honored by your introduction. This is a very special evening for me, my colleagues. Uh, to be introducing for the very first time Joe Biden as President of the United States. And I could, my heart could not be filled with more joy to have uh, that occasion marked by introducing him to our House Democratic Caucus. Uh, that joy is also, also uh, increased by being introduced by Angie Craig, and I'm so glad she referenced her wife and her four sons, whom I love hearing about. In, and now in front of the President of the United States. Thank you, Angie, for your leadership, your friendship, and your very generous introduction. You make this evening very special to me, a special evening. First time, Mr. President, that I'm introducing you as President of the United States to my great House Democratic Caucus. That makes it even better. My colleagues, as you know, our nation is blessed with Joe Biden as President of the United States. He is an extraordinary president. He knows how to get the job done. When our nation faced the Great Recession, it was Joe Biden who led the implementation and accountability of ARA, helping to create and save millions of jobs. That experience serves him well uh, with the American Rescue Plan. When the Democratic Caucus was passing the Affordable Care Act, Joe Biden was a partner for progress in the White House, and that experience serves him well as we face the coronavirus crisis. Joe Biden has been a voice of reason and resilience with a clear path to lead us out of this crisis. On another front, I want to tell you about Joe Biden, the Joe Biden I've seen with parents of victims of gun violence, listening to them and offering them the empathy, grace, and courage that he can give them as someone with the terrible understanding of a father who has shared their experience. Continuing on the family front, Joe and Joe Biden have taken their experience as a Blue Star family to help ensure that service members, military families, and veterans have their service respected, the support that they need, and the benefits they have earned. He is our Commander-in-Chief, and Joe Biden is the first president in 40 years to have a son who served in a war. He knows what it is like for military families of those who are deployed. He knows the role that our hidden heroes and caregivers have for returning veterans. And he's so proud of Bo. He is concerned about other veterans who have suffered from cancer. Men are at many after being exposed to toxins in the burn pits of Iraq. That is just one reason for his enthusiasm for the cancer moonshot demonstrated as recently as today by a bipartisan meeting on cancer at the White House. I've seen President Biden working behind the scenes, hammering out solutions for the American people. He is a leader with the humility to seek expertise and science. 
and the confidence to act upon it. On the policy side, President Biden has been a longtime legislative partner, including for VAWA, for gun violence prevention, and of course, with his connection to America's working families. On the global front, President Biden is a distinguished world leader who commands the respect of allies and adversaries alike. I especially personally enjoyed seeing him as a Catholic, I enjoyed seeing him received at the Vatican when the Pope was inaugurated, when Pope Francis was inaugurated. On the political front, Joe Biden has campaigned with or for many members of Congress, almost everyone in this virtual setting. Thank you, Mr. President, for being there and for with us and for us. My husband, Paul, always says, I just wonder how long into a speech it will be before Nancy starts talking about her grandchildren, our grandchildren. My grandchildren have for many, many years been longtime friends of Joe Biden. They have a range in age, but all of them love Joe Biden. But let me tell you one story. I think it was like 2013, four and five-year-old, two of my, Paul and Thomas, uh, we were at an event of the DCCC in New York, and Joe Biden was the featured speaker. They were so excited to see him because they'd heard so much about him from their cousins. And they met him, they talked about pets and things like that. And afterward, after the, the luncheon was over, I took them for candy, don't tell their mom. I took them for candy at a place, Dylan's in New York. Well, they have sort of like swinging doors. You have to get through the doors, uh, uh, one part of the store to the next. So here they are, Pace is packed and jam. These kids are making all this noise over there on the side. And all of a sudden, I hear them pronounce, in order to open these doors, we do not say open sesame, we say open Biden. That's our magic word. <laughs> open Biden, I love it. Now more than ever, we need a battle-tested forward-looking leader who will fight for the people, a president with the values, experience, and the strategic thinking to bring our nation together and to build a better, fairer world for our children. As president, he is taking us to new heights of inclusion in the success of America. President Biden is a leader who is the personification of hope and courage, values, authenticity, and integrity. Joe Biden is president, as president, and with Democratic majorities in the House and Senate, we will deliver bold progress for the people. And now it is my privilege to present the 45th president of the United States, as my children, grandchildren would say, open Biden, Mr. President. <laughs> Nancy, I love you. There's no one I'd rather work with than you. We've been friends a long time. And your whole family, your daughters, your, and it, it's just been a great relationship. And uh, I think that uh, Angie was absolutely correct that you've been the consummate leader. I've been here a long time, and there's been no speaker that's been your equal, although there have been some great speakers. And uh, you just have a special way about you, Nancy. And you're also uh, very, very, which is important, you're kind, but you're tough and you know what's right, and you stick by it. And uh, I admire the devil out of you. And uh, I, uh, I, I want to thank uh, somebody I campaigned for. He was leading by 30 points till I campaigned for him, but he still won anyway, Hakeem Jeffries, and, uh, and Vice Chair uh, uh, Aguilar for putting this conference together and including me. And I want to thank the entire leadership team and all your committee chairs for taking an important uh, step in the American Rescue Plan last week. You all showed at a time when the American people are depending on us, and they are desperately in need of us, that a diverse caucus isn't a divided caucus. Congressman Clyburn, I also want to note that it was almost exactly a year ago today that you delivered the endorsement to me in South Carolina that meant so much to me in my campaign. You're a great friend. And the night of, the, of the, that primary, America had, had uh, confirmed only 
with fewer than 100 COVID cases. That's just a year ago. Breonna Taylor and George Floyd were still alive. California had yet to suffer the worst, the wor what would become the worst fire season in recorded history. And there had been no violent insurrection on Capitol Hill. And uh, I could go on. A lot's changed. My point is this. In the year that has passed, all the challenge I spoke about that night, jobs and the economy, affordable, accessible health care, climate change and the need to root out institutional racism, the need for unity and healing, have all become urgent, 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 especially in light of the pandemic that has taken the lives of over, as of yesterday, 518,720, I believe it was, Americans. Fellow Americans have lost their lives. And more than 400,000 businesses, mostly small businesses, many minority businesses, have been shuttered. Cost of millions of jobs, 1.3 million public sector education, nurses, cops, firefighters, essential workers have lost their jobs. So my message today is really simple. You, you, this caucus, have shown the American people the difference between democratic leadership and what we just had. Leadership makes a difference. And you're continuing to do so. For example, I know that this week you're working on the Protect Our Democracy reforms, as well as the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, both of which I strongly support. And I know in the past couple of days, you've had briefings and conversations on immigration, health care, foreign policy, climate crisis, and a lot more. And as you work on all of these, I urge you to continue to speak up and speak out about the American Rescue Plan. And here's why. You know, the confidence in the American, American government has, has been plummeting since the late 60s to what it is now. And many of you remember that in 2009, we expended a lot of political capital, Nancy and I and others, in the Recovery Act. It was, it was an act that had less than two-tenths of 1 percent waste or fraud in it, according to the experts. And the economists told us we literally saved America from the Depression. But we didn't adequately explain what we had done. Barack was so modest, he didn't want to take, as he said, a victory lap. I kept saying, tell people what we did. So we don't have time. I'm not going to take a victory lap. And we paid a price for it, ironically, for that humility. And this is a case where every single piece of the bill you passed addresses a genuine, desperate need for the American people. Each piece isn't just defensible, it is urgent and overwhelmingly supported by the people. It's good policy and it's good politics. And I'm not sure we've ever seen something that is needed as badly as the American Rescue Plan that was as broadly popular. Nancy and I have passed some really important things in our careers, but they haven't always been that. They've been badly needed, but they haven't been overwhelmingly popular. Sir, I've served in the Congress for 36 years before becoming vice president for eight. We never had anything this urgent and this ambitious that was so widely embraced. Three quarters of the American people are together with us on this. Three quarters. Nearly unanimous support among Democrats. More than 70 percent of independents in poll after poll, 60 percent of Republicans. I'll say that again. 60 percent of Republicans support what we're doing. A bipartisan group of more than 425 mayors, Democrat and Republican, the AFL-CIO and business leaders. Look, the show of unity we're seeing is unprecedented. It isn't just about the sum of the total package. Americans are lockstep on each of the major elements of the plan, and they know what they are. They support what we're doing on vaccines. Look at the progress we've made with your help. We've been able to move us to the point where we had very little supply, to we will have enough vaccine because of the work we've done with your help, enough vaccine by the end of May to be able to vaccinate every single adult in America. It will not be done by them, but that supply will be there. They support what we're doing on direct payments, on unemployment insurance, 
on food and nutrition support, on keeping people in their homes, on safely reopening our schools, staying unified as we complete this process of past the American Rescue Plan won't just make a difference in our fight against COVID-19 and our efforts to rebuild the economy, it will also show the American people we're capable of coming together for what matters most to them. They've lost faith in government. This is a time to reestablish that faith and the reason why they should have faith because we're doing the right thing. It's a show of strength and a first step forward to re restoring their faith in the capacity of government to have their backs. Now, if we deliver on this, it also builds momentum. It builds real enthusiasm as well. And I will make everything else we want to deliver, this will make everything more possible to get it done. That's why starting off this victory is so important because it's so consequential to their lives. And we know how much we have to do. But all starts, it all starts here. It starts by bringing this home, bringing home what you've done all the way. And I know we're all making some small compromises, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the work you've done. I want to thank you for the work we're going to continue to do. I know parts of this and everything else we seek to do are not easy. But people are going to remember how we showed up in this moment, how we listened to them, to them, not specifically to them, and how we took action. I believe we're going to come through this, and I think the people's memories will be long. And if we continue to stay laser focused on getting shots in people's arms, responding to the economic crisis, it's going to open up a lot of hearts and a lot of doors for us tomorrow to do the many more things we know we have to do. So I want to thank you all. I really mean it from the bottom. I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do.